Welcome to CAS Basic Computer Skills Microsoft Office, Columbia Gorge Community College. The Dells, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor. This video is going to be for week four and we're going to be talking about the second word chapter in the book. Last week you did the adventure project, you learned how to make a flyer, you did a learning project and an application project. And so this week we're going to move on and we're going to be learning how to do a research paper. Now a lot of times when you take writing classes they say write this research paper, do MLA st style, put in a footnote and turn it in on you know Tuesday or whatever. They don't really tell you how to create the paper other than go do your research and make this happen. So this is actually a project where you're going to copy and paste all the information. You aren't going to do any actual research. Everybody's turning in exactly word for word the same project. But you are going to learn how to create those citations. So let's look at that a little bit. That isn't what I wanted. I clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. Now you can notice that bright spot. And I can't really get away from that, unfortunately. That's the lamp on the document camera. But what I want to talk to you a little bit about is what your paper is going to look like. It's going to be three pages, one complete page, a partial page, and it's going to have your citations work cited page. On that you're going to be doing some things, you know, you're going to be doing exact spacing, you're going to sus suppress a space after your paragraph so it's not going to have this like big gap between every paragraph. You're going to come down here and you're going to put in like a footnote. So you're going to be including that footnote and then at the bottom you create the actual footnote that you're going to include. You're also going to be putting inline citations in like for example this one and that is actually a live citation so if I clicked on it it would show me certain information. It's not just like parentheses R O S S I parentheses like you just look at it. It's live. It has an actual action. Once you've created all of that, you've gone through and done all of that with it, then basically there's a special way they're going to show you how to do, and you will create your citations page right here. Then they're going to have you change some words in your citation page, maybe add something, subtract something, do, you know, funky things like that. It's always fun to do those types of things. Then they're going to have a direction that tells you to make it plain text, and you need to make sure you make it plain text. If you don't, then I have to grade you down for that, unfortunately. Also, they're going to have to go back through and change some words in this, like, oh, well, I'm now looking at my paper and I've used this word too many times, or I want to change this to a synonym. So you need to go back through those steps. So you're going to start on the very first page of the chapter. You're going to, this is the second page of the chapter where you see that picture. And then you're going to walk all the way through it. Once you've gotten all the way through the chapter, you come to the yellow pages, and then you're going to have completed the project, save it, and you're going to submit it here under the learning project for the link right here. Now, if you have, you're using Office 2010 or even 207, you're not going to have to turn in the version form for this one really because this doesn't have any colors or font type stuff going on with it. The only thing you have to do is kind of get this type of a font and you'll notice the best you can see on this that this is a serif font. It has the little wingy dingies on it that kind of add to it. So you need a, a serif font like a Times Rome New Roman, um, New, Ro New Times Roman, whatever they call that one. Um, something like that will work if you're using a file that doesn't have the exact one that the book says. You should get very, very close to how this looks. And you can see it in your, your book. Your book shows you. Look at your book. Look at your font. Make sure they're very, very close. And if you do that, you're not going to have any sort of problems. If you need some extra help, you have the textbook up here with PowerPoint. Here's some research paper tips and tricks YouTube you can use. You got your unit goals, of course. This video is the most important thing you watch before you ever even start the unit. Like nothing's done yet, that's the first thing you watch. Direction summary, I want to clarify what it really does. I think there's some confusion. It's like, oh, well, I can just look at the summary and then I can do the whole week's worth of work and I'm good to go. No, that's not what it was created for. And because it wasn't created for how you're using it, you're going to run into trouble. That was designed so as you get 
finished, you go through it and look at it and make sure you've done everything and you've kind of followed the steps. It does not have the step-by-step -step directions. It does not have all the details you're going to need to get the projects right. It's basically what it says it is. It's a summary of the information so you can go, oh, I missed that one. i got to go back and do it. And then you go back and take care of that. This summary right here is literally a checklist. Did I do it? Check. Did I write my form? Check. These are your data files. You're going to need those in a minute. You probably won't need them for the actual learning project. You'll need it for the application project. So that's what we're going to move down and talk about. Next is this application project you need to do. So you've gotten to the yellow pages. You're going to turn through the yellow pages until you find consider this your turn. And once you find this consider this your turn, you're going to look at the three projects and you're going to decide which one you would like to do. You're doing one of the three. Usually the number one is the easiest, number two is a little bit harder, and number three is a lot tougher. So let me talk you through them a little bit. So you're going to create a research paper about laptops, tablets, and desktops. It does tell you to go to a file in the student data files called your turn two hyphen one computer notes. And that's just what they are. They're notes. So you don't have to do the research. So you would come over here, you would go to the data files, and you would find that file and download it. Those are the notes that, like, you've been working, getting ready to do this paper, you've got notes. But now you've got to make the actual paper. You're going to have to rearrange the notes. You're going to have to paragraph them, indent them, space them, add your citations, put in your footnotes. Create your works cited page, make it plain text, do all of those, add italics, all of those types of things that you did for this main paper here. So it should end up looking virtually like this paper, other than it will have different data, different information, and you have to do more of it. It's kind of baby steps from Okay, you follow all the directions to now kind of do it on your own, but we're going to give you the notes. And then when you hit your writing classes or your psych classes or whatever, it's kind of like, okay, now you know how to put the thing together. Go do your own notes. And so it's kind of the baby step approach. So I do expect to find inline citations. I do expect to find a correct footnote done correctly. I do expect to see the header. I do expect to see the titling up here. I do expect to see a headline, you know, a title type of thing. I do expect to see paragraphs. I do expect to see suppressed spaces so there's not like this gigantic gap between them. You will have a works cited page and it will be done this way. It will not come from some online source or something like that. It will be done through this and it will be done correctly. You'll have the hanging indents and you will have it all format it correctly, which Microsoft really helps you do. It's not that big a deal once you put it into your actual editor here as you're putting it together. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I am going to also be looking that, oops, sorry, it bounces. It's been put in as a plain text. So that's what I'm going to be looking for here. Now, if you don't want to do that one and you move over to this one, it's going to be basically exactly the same thing, except it's your turn 2.2, terminal notes, and you're going to do exactly the same thing on a different topic. Now, if you go to the third one, it's on social media, and that's like, oh, that's going to be really interesting. But remember, that one is the one that's designed for teams of three to do, and we're a team of one. So that means you are person one, two, and three on that. So it's a lot more work you're going to have to be doing the research and a full research paper. And you're not going to have notes to start from. You're doing it from scratch. And I'll tell you, it's a lot more work. You can do it, especially if you're looking for a challenge. But it is a lot more work. Once you've completed that, then, of course, you're going to upload it into your application project. And you're going to complete the question and answer page that goes with it. Notice I have a direction there. Be sure to put in the footnote because people tend to forget it. On part two, you're going to create a Word document, obviously, and you're going to be doing the question and answers. 
and you do need to do them in a question and answer format, which means you type the question that is here in the book. You made several decisions while creating the research paper, how to organize the notes, where to place the citation. So you're going to put that together. And then you're going to go ahead and complete it. You're going to need, it's basically a 200 word reply in the sense that your questions take up part of that. So as you're reading through on your questions, you're going to be putting some of these questions in there, then writing the answer, putting the question in, writing the answer, putting the question in, writing the answer. So those questions are going to take up part of your space. So it's basically 150 words, give or take a little bit, on your actual reply. And so I should see the question, I should see the answer, I should see the question, I should see the answer, and there should be a space between one with each one being a paragraph. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't caught up on the reading of the syllabus or something like that, there is a requirement that you must pass one application project for each topic type area we're doing, like for Word, for Excel, for PowerPoint, you must pass one of the application projects for each one of those or you will not pass the class. Well, at least it's a high possibility you will not pass the class. So you need to make sure you have a passing application project. Not really my responsibility to make sure you have one. I do try to notify people if there's a problem. But don't assume that that's my job. Assume that it's your job to make sure you've got a passing project. I think it's something like you'd have to do the math. Take like 32 or 33 or 4, maybe 34, divided by 50, and you should be able to tell. In fact, we'll do it right here just so that everybody knows. I think it's something like 34 divided by 50. It might be 35 then. Okay, you have to have a 35 or above to have a passing project. I have to do that math every time anyway, so I never can remember for sure. So you have to have a 35. If you don't have a 35 showing for your application projects, you didn't pass one. So make sure you have that. Also make sure I have both documents because basically you can't pass it without turning the question and answer in. Question and answer is worth 20. Projects worth 30. 50 take away 20 is 30. 35 is passing. So obviously you have to have the question and answer document. So with all that, I think that brings us around to looking at the last piece that you need to get done. For this week, just scroll a bit here, hang on, we'll get there in a second. And that is your journal reflection. So you need to go in and do that journal reflection. This will be your second one. There are some things that you need to do. You need to have 150 words or more. You need to tell me three themes or three things you learned in the unit. You need to tell me two ways you will use that information. And tell me one idea you would teach to someone else if you have the chance and why you think it would be helpful for them. You do not actually have to teach it. It's something you would teach. This is the one that people have been missing sometimes. This tends to be the one that gets them. Make sure that each question is a paragraph allowing at least one line between it. Otherwise, when I pull it up on the screen, it's just this blob of text that's very, very hard for me to read. So please make sure you do make each answer a, a separate paragraph with a space. If in doubt, put two spaces. Moodle sometimes likes to take a space away anyway, so you know even a couple of spaces will be okay. It's going to be much easier for me to read. And you want me to be able to ease it, read it easily because then you're more likely to get a good grade. I suggest you may want to write it in Word, copy and paste it in. That way you've got one, you don't lose it halfway through, which Moodle loves to do to me. That's its favorite trick. You're not working in a small box, then you can actually see what you're typing. Like when I type feedback, I'm working in like a half inch by a inch box, and it's almost impossible to see what I'm doing. It's really frustrating. And so it's a lot easier to do it in Word and then just copy and paste it in. Standard English, all of those types of things, capital periods, capital I's, all of those types. And just a reminder that late work is not accepted for the journals. You do need to have it on time or it will result in a score of zero.
The last thing you need to do is go in and do the forms. Each video will continue to get shorter as you get better at doing this each time, but you need to do the form. Your first post needs to be 100 words. Your reply needs to be 50 words. You add your discussion right here. Don't forget to, if you're first or early, go back and add a reply to at least one person's. Otherwise, you don't get full credit. Sometimes they'll say, oh, she won't notice I'm a few words short. I got a few. I'm almost there. No, I seriously, I do hold you to that 100 words. If you have 98 words, your grade goes down. If you have 50 words when you're supposed to have 100, your grade really goes down. So you need to make sure you have the 100 words. Word, Microsoft Word counts it for you if you want to. And believe it or not, Moodle counts it for me. So I can see instantly exactly how many words you have. So the only last thing to mention is the fact that if you want to do extra credit, you can do one word project for extra credit. You may not do two or three of them. They have to be the in the lab in the yellow pages and they get uploaded here. They need to be uploaded within basically a week of completing that unit. So in other words, in the middle of three weeks from now, you can't say, oh, you know, I think I want to do a word one. Nope, you have missed the boat. Too late. So you have to decide right then and there and have it done within the week. By the time that the second week link closes for the late work, the extra credit project needs to be turned in. I think this completes it for us today. We'll come back for another video for the next unit.